the Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Mosa. Just run into him, they are saying, the name of the Lord, hallelujah, a strong tower, the righteous run into him, and they are saying, We got praise. Yes, mighty God. Father, the people who don't believe that you are God, even the people who don't believe you are God, you still help them and you still help them. Reveal yourself to them, oh God. Reveal yourself, Jehovah God. Reveal yourself, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The next prayer point is, and my last prayer point, is coming from Psalms 119, verse 133. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible says, guard my steps as you promised, don't let any sin control me. Mm. I hallelujah. want us to pray that God will guide our steps everywhere and help us to not be controlled by sin. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we are praying that you shall guide our steps. We are praying that you shall watch over everyone. Guide us, guide us. Guide our speech, O God. Guide our behavior, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Guide our steps, O God. Guide our steps, mighty God. Mighty God, mighty God. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to not be overtaken by sin. Help us to not be overtaken by the devil, Lord. Help us to do what is right. Help Thank us to you, not Thank you, Jehovah God. Help we give you the praise. Guide our Help states. Guide our Help states, us, Lord, oh God. Guide our states, guide our states guide King of Kings. Guide, guide us, Lord. Right Lead us, oh God. You know where we should be. In Lead the right us time. in the right ways. Lead us in Lord. the right ways, mighty God. Lead us, lead us, us, lead us, O God. Lead us, O God, that we will not do wrong things. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are so grateful. Guide us and lead us, O God. Guide us and lead us, O God. Guide us and lead us, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We give you the praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we are praying, we are praying, we are praying, we are praying. In the name of Jesus. Almighty God. We are so grateful. We are so grateful, Jehovah God. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. We are so grateful, Jehovah God. We are so grateful, King of Kings. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you promise you Jesus shall guide us. Jesus is mighty name. Guide us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Bible says, Guide us. Jesus is mighty name. 
In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we give you the praise. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray we shall not be controlled by how we feel, but we are praying that King of Kings and Lord of Lords guide us, O God. In Jesus' name. Psalms 100. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Shout to the Lord, all the, all the earth. Serve the Lord with joy. Come before Him with singing. Know that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to Him. We are His people, the sheep He tends. Come into His city with songs of thanksgiving. Come mm. into His courtyards with songs of praise. Thank Him and praise His name. The Lord is good. His love continues forever. His loyalty continues from now on. Hallelujah. I just want us to thank the Lord today. Lord, we are you, Thank you, Jehovah God, for the holidays, O oh God, for the traveling mercies, O oh God, people that have traveled in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory. We Father, we give you praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for providing for the school holidays, oh God, for the traveling masses, oh God. We are so grateful. We are so grateful, Jehovah God. Just for all of us, Lord. Just for all of us. You decided to put your son on a cross. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, you care about us. We are so grateful. Oh, we are so grateful, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We come into your court with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we give you the praise. We give you glory. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the protection. Thank you, Jehovah God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, mighty God. Oh, we give you the praise. Yes, mighty God. Yes, Jehovah God. Yes, Lord. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Thank you, thank you for all that you have done, you are doing for us. We are thanking you for being there for us when we needed healing. We are thanking you for being there for us when we needed forgiveness. We are thanking you for teaching us your commandments. And we are thanking you for everything that you have ever done for us, Lord. We give you praise. You have never taken a day off because you love us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because you don't want anything bad to happen to us, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, Lord. You give people so many chances. Oh, yes, Lord. Give us another chance. Give us another chance to live, O oh God. You have been there for Jesus. 16, says, Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God. As we go into time, praise and worship, the first song we will be singing is My God is Awesome. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My God is awesome. Son, He the mountain. In the valley, hiding from the rain, my God is awesome. He's real and unbroken. His strength where I am weak, forever He will reign. My God is awesome. He.
appreciate God. Some of you have been on holidays, some of you have traveled to other places and you've come back safely. My family were away in Zambia and they just came back 
uh, home safely after three weeks. We just want to thank God. If God gave me new life today, it is something that uh, you can uh, appreciate uh, uh, God for. Let's just uh, thank God today as we appreciate uh, God. If you can, I can give us our Hebrews 11 on the screen as we appreciate God and thank God. Wherever you are, let's just thank God. Father, we are so grateful. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. And uh, you alone, you are worthy of all the praise. We've woken up today to say thank you for this uh, new month, the ninth month. We also want to say, God, we are grateful. Thank you for allowing us to be alive in this month of uh, uh, September. Father, we are grateful. Uh, we have uh, gone almost uh, halfway the year. We are now in the uh, ninth month. Jehovah God, we are grateful. This is a great month that God we shall bring uh, forth uh, that which you have given unto us. Even as we give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. As God's people say, Amen and uh, uh, Amen. Should be a microphone uh, just uh, next to the laptops. Uh, uh, Kathy, if you help us uh, uh, to read out. Let's all go to Hebrews chapter number 11. There are some Bibles uh, around in the church uh, uh, for those that want uh, a copy and those that are in Zoom and at home, please uh, get your Bibles ready even as we read together. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number 11. And today we just want to look at. Uh, the results of faith if I need to trust God why am I trusting God is there any results that are going to come out of this if you are starting a business uh, there will always be a, an aspect to say am I going to get a profit out of uh, this if uh, you are going to school you begin to look at uh, what results am I going to get if I study hard. So because you are studying hard, you have a goal in mind and you want to see good results. So what we are saying is that our faith in God, trusting God, produces results. They are good results that come as a result of... Um, of uh, trusting, uh, uh, trusting God. Amen and amen. Uh, there are some Bibles uh, on the chairs. Uh, uh, just here, Jemima, you can distribute uh, uh, some Bibles even as we read uh, Hebrews 11. Uh, Sister Kathy, you can uh, start from um, verse uh, 17. I will let you know where to stop. We'll be pausing as we go through this wonderful scripture that we've been uh, uh, looking uh, at. Yes, uh, Sister Kathy, please go ahead. Hebrews 11 he from verse 17. Hebrews 11 um, 17, the Bible reads, It was faith that made Abraham offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice when God put Abraham to the test. Abraham was the one to whom God had made the promise, yet he was ready to offer his only son as a sacrifice. God had said to him, it is through Isaac that you will have the descendants of promise. Mm. Abraham reckoned that God was able to raise Isaac from death. Mm. And, so, and so to speak, Abraham did receive Isaac back from death. It was faith that made Isaac promise blessings for the future to Jacob and Esu. It was faith that made Jacob bless each of the sons of Joseph just before he died. He, he leaned on top of his walking stick and worshipped God. It was faith that made Joseph, when he was about to die, speak of the departure of the Israelites from Egypt and leave instructions about what should be done with his body. It was faith that made the parents of Moses hide him three months after he was born. They saw that he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid to disobey the king's order. It was faith that, faith that made Moses when he had grown up, refused to be called the son of the king's daughter. Mm. He preferred to suffer with God's people rather than to enjoy the sin for a little while. He reckoned that to suffer scorn for the Messiah was worth far more than all the treasures of Egypt 
for he kept his eyes on the future reward. It was faith that made Moses leave Egypt without being afraid of the king's anger, as though he saw the invisible God. He refused to turn back. It was faith that made him establish the Passover and brought the blood to be sprinkled on the doors, so that the angel of death would not kill the first one's son. Okay, so maybe we will stop, uh, we will pause there at our verse. Is that verse 29? Verse 29. Verse 29. It was faith that made the Israelites able to cross the Red Sea as if on dry land. When the Egyptians tried to do it, the water swallowed them up. Amen, amen. So, uh, when we read uh, these stories, and uh, for some good reason, in God's wisdom, all the characters that are mentioned uh, in Hebrews 11, which is a New Testament book, is uh, coming all the way from the Old Testament. Uh, so if you give us uh, verse 17, uh, Shekina, uh, look at uh, these verses uh, as we look at uh, results of faith. What are the outcomes? If we ask Jonathan, uh, if you write your exam, which results are you expecting? Good results. Jemima, if we say, I want my faith to produce results, I want what I am baking to produce good baking. What would you expect? What type of results? Good results. Excellent results. Okay? And uh, uh, you find that uh, everything that we do, we want to get good results. We want to get the best results. So believing God Trusting God and having confidence in God always produces good results. And these are the results I want us to look at. We have defined what faith is. Faith is believing the word of God and acting on the word of God. Sister Jamal. So good results are always expected good results is what everybody goes for i know all of us or maybe a number of us we support football teams every time the game is about to start we are all expecting good results when the results are bad what happens we get disappointed so this is not what i expected was it last week that uh, the results were out uh, uh, for students uh, that uh, uh, wrote their uh, papers, those in universities, uh, the GSEs, we saw the results and uh, people were excited and the cameras were all over just to say what results people got and it is the results that determine the next level. If, for example, you want to go to a burst university or the top 10 universities, for example, in the UK, you expect your results to be the best results so you can access the best things. So I just want to encourage each one of us that uh, to access the results of faith, you must be assured to say, indeed, they are good results to anybody who trusts God. Even more than the results in school. Because in school, sometimes you don't know how the exam will be. So you don't know where your results will be. But I want to assure somebody today, as we look at the results of faith, what do I get if I put my trust and my confidence in God, if I put my faith in God? Are there good results that come as a result? The answer is yes. And these are some of the results I want us to look at. Look at uh, Hebrews 11 and verse 17. Let's all read together. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. By faith, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise was in the act of offering up 
His only son, give us verse 18. Of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named or come. Next. He considered that God was able to raise his child back to life from the dead. From which, figuratively speaking, Isaac was dead and he was received back. So what faith is welcome you all? So there are good results in trusting God. So we have just seen one result or one example of uh, Abraham. He had only one promised child, Isaac. We have mentioned this before. Abraham and Sarah, they had their first born of the promise, Isaac, when Abraham was 100 years. And then Sarah, she was 98. Who can agree with God and uh, say, oh, I want you to take your only son, go and give me a sacrifice on the mountain, kill him and give him to me. I'm sure you would struggle. But because of faith, in his heart, Abraham said, the same God who gave me, this Isaac, if I take him to the mountain and kill him and offer him as a sacrifice to God, I am trusting God to say, even in death, he's going to come back to me. That's what faith is. Faith has results. And the results of faith are always good. Are always positive. Even in death, you expect life. Even when you are down, you expect to rise up. Even when you are sick, the results of faith are that you are going to be healed. Even when you have nothing, the results of faith, because you believe in God, you are saying, God, I have nothing, but I'm trusting you. By faith, you are going to give me. So we see that faith in God, trust in God, always has good results. That's why we need to trust this God. Because in faith or by faith, we get these good results. The other result, uh, Sister Kathy, if you go back, let's all go. Uh, she kind give us uh, Hebrews 11. We are in Hebrews. Now give us verse 3. Let's see what the Bible says, the other benefit. So number one, we have seen the, be the first result is that faith always produces good results. Faith always produces the best results. Teams may disappoint us. Today they win, tomorrow they fail. But there is a God team, there is a God in heaven with the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ that are always winning. So the results are always the best. So they are good results. What is verse 3 saying? Let's all listen to this. Hebrews 11, 3. It is by faith that we understand that the universe was created by God's word, so that what can be seen was made out of what cannot be seen. Amen. So the other result of faith, when you have faith in God, is that you can see things that are not seen but you are able to see in other words it gives you a perception to see beyond with faith you can see yourself making it the people in the world will tell you to say confess positively or positive confession but for you and me, it's not only positive confession, it is faith in God that makes us to see ourselves making it in life. So faith, the second result of faith, number one is that faith has always posit has got positive results. Number two result of faith is that you see things that others cannot see. You see beyond. The Bible has just told us in Hebrews 11.3, the things we see were made of things that cannot be seen. So when God spoke the word, he had faith in himself and in his word to say what I'm going to say is going to be created. That's why you and me always be positive. Always have faith in God because you are assured of good results. 
Weeping may endure for a night, you may suffer a little bit. For example, Chile, Shekinah, soon and very soon, Jonathan, you will be preparing uh, for your GSE's results. As you trust God to say, God, I am preparing for these results. I am giving up this, I am giving up this so I can start. It's painful, but be assured of the good results that are going to come out of your study, what is coming out of your doing. Uh, jet travels are uh, all the way to London driving on the motor. It's spent sometimes we get tired to go to work. But the one good thing is that uh, at the end of my work, I am going to do what? To receive a payment. I'm going to receive a reward of what I am doing. Farmers, when they are planting, it's difficult because they have to till the land, they have to find the uh, uh, seeds. They have to plant, they have to do this, and sometimes the weather is not even very good. But what are they doing? They go ahead and plant. And as they plant, they are going to harvest. So what are we saying? Every time you have faith in God, it gives you insight to see things that other people cannot see. That's why as a believer, Faith sees what others cannot see. In other words, you receive a special lens. You are able to see beyond. You are able to see what the natural eyes can see. That's why, believers, you can always be assured to say, even if my circumstances are like this, I have to see beyond my circumstances. Let's read uh, another scripture. 2nd Corinthians 4 verse 18. 2nd Corinthians 4 18. Let's all go to 2nd Corinthians chapter number 4 verse 18. What are the results? Where we are in Hebrews, you start going backwards, you find the first and second uh, uh, book of Corinthians. After Romans, the Corinthians, first and second Corinthians chapter number 4 verse 18 2nd Corinthians chapter number 4 verse 18 yes sister Kathy 2nd Corinthians 4 18 Bible reads for we fix our attention not on things that we are that are seen but on things that are unseen what can be seen lasts only for a time but what cannot be seen lasts forever amen amen so the writer of 2 Corinthians 4.18, who is Apostle Paul, says, uh, We look not at the things which are seen. And that is somehow a paradox. We don't look at the things that are seen. In other words, he's saying we are looking. But what we are looking at is beyond what can be seen. So in other words, say, how can you look at something that you cannot see? That is what faith is. Because you trust God to say, I am believing God. I'm going to buy my own house. I'm going to buy my own this and this and this. People will say, but your salary is just 1,500 pounds. How are you going to manage that? Then they are looking at your circumstances and what is happening and what your salary is saying. But Paul, here he says, we don't look at the things which are seen but we look at the things that are not seen for the things that are here that we are looking at are just temporal but the things which are not seen are eternal are forever so what God is saying is that don't just focus on the temporal things that you can see with your eyes faith sees beyond with faith, you can see yourself owning your own company before you own it. Uh, last week, we had a wonderful time we were discussing with Jay. Uh, when you look at faith, uh, sometimes it, it's, uh, it's a little bit like a, a, a bit of a, like a, you, you are crazy in summer. When you look at people that uh, make things, do you know that there are models of things that are not yet uh, manufactured? But they will advertise 
We are going to have our next generation of a phone, of a car, of a laptop, and it will look like this, and they still advertise to say, if you want one, the latest one that is going to come out in 2023, pre-order before it comes out, and you start paying. What are you paying for? Have you seen what you are paying for? The answer is no. But is it going to be out? As far as the manufacturers are concerned, it's going to be there. As we are talking right now, Manufacturers of cars, phones, and other stuff, they are busy on their uh, 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 drawing boards, trying to figure out how it will gonna look, this and this and this. Those in construction, Kathy, you can help us. When they are saying, this is the site where we are going to build a school, or a tower, or anything. What do the engineers do, the architectures? You find the picture of the drawings, stuck on wooden boards to say this is how it will look like. We haven't seen yet uh, the H2 train that uh, will be running between London and uh, Birmingham and Manchester, but we have seen all the pictures and they have told us the speed. We haven't yet uh, uh, seen the, uh, the speed, but you and me, we can trust God to say, you know what, I haven't seen it because uh, the thing I want hasn't been seen yet. I want to see the best. I want to do the best. And that is the life of faith. You see things beyond. And I want to encourage you, young people, don't just settle for anything. Oh, no one can go from Oxford. Uh, the record from our school says uh, no one has uh, gone to Cambridge or Oxford. Uh, that is what the school says. Oh, that is what the history says but you are a history maker you must aim high to say this is what i want to achieve so faith helps you to see beyond the natural we were discussing in the bible study the other week uh, when one of the pastors uh, uh, gave a testimony for 10 years they were refused to get uh, uh, a certain document that they needed but they went into the word of god and said you know what god as we can see that uh, this is ours, they have given it to us. But they are saying they can't give us, uh, and it took 10 years. The pastor says we were not shaken. We kept trusting God and believing God. What happened this year? Few weeks or few months ago, they received an email to say, the document you've been waiting for for the last 10 years, track the courier, it will be with you in the next few days. So they thought, ah, these are hoaxy. Where did this email come from? The government doesn't send uh, these emails. The next thing is, another email comes. Your courier has picked uh, your documents. The next thing, uh, they received an email in the morning, expect the courier today between 9 and 10. They went to the door waiting for the courier. Did the courier come? Yes. And they said, until we open the envelope. But they saw it 10 years before, and they believed God. And what happened? They received the document they wanted. So I want you and me to begin to see beyond. So faith is always producing good results. Number two, faith helps you to see beyond what you can ever see. Let's say, look at uh, number three, faith in God produces results that you are going to walk closer with God. Let's go to uh, Hebrews uh, 11. There are some more marks. Uh, uh, let's go open to Hebrews uh, 11. And uh, let's say have uh, somebody read Hebrews 11, 5 and 6. Let's go back to Hebrews uh, 11, 5 and 6. What is the other result of faith? is that you begin to walk up to walk closer with God. Shinai, uh, Hebrews 11, 5 and 6. Shekinah, if you can find Hebrews uh, 11, 7. And then Kathy will come back uh, uh, to, uh, to the other scriptures. Faith enables or helps us to walk closely with God. Trust in God. Confidence in God. Yes, what is uh, Hebrews 11, 5 and 6 saying? By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commanded as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he is and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. 
Amen. Amen. So Enoch was taken out of this earth because he pleased God. How? The Bible says he walked with God. What helped him to walk with God according to Hebrews 11, uh, 5 and 6? He walked closely with God. He pleased God by faith, by trusting God, by having confidence in this God. So what faith does, faith helps you to walk closer with God. Helps you to walk closer uh, with God. Shekana, what is uh, Hebrews uh, 11, 7 says? Hebrews 11, verse 7 says, By faith Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in the very fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this he condemned the world and became uh, an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Amen. So the Bible is saying the other result of faith is that uh, you can foresee danger or you can sense danger before it happens and you prepare to avoid that danger. What happened to Noah? Noah was told by God because he had faith in God. God revealed to him to say, Noah, the whole world is going to be wiped out. What I want you to do is to make an ark. We have read about the story. Sunday school, Eliezer, Jemima, David, Jonathan, all of our children, you've uh, read about that story when Noah made the ark. We have seen in different uh, stories that uh, even people that don't know God you say, oh, it, it is the ark of Noah. Oh, the ark of Noah and all those stories. What happened is that danger was coming, but God revealed to somebody who had faith in him. Even each one of us as believers, when we have faith in God and trust Him, is going to show us and help us to avoid danger and take a new course and avoid what is going to, to happen and destroy. Because there was destruction coming, what happened? It was uh, helped. Kathy, if you go to Acts chapter number 27, she's going to give us Acts 27, 27. Acts chapter number 27 and verse 27, we are looking at the results of faith. The results of faith. Acts 27, from verse 27 to 38, but you just pick uh, a few things there. Avoiding danger. When you have faith in God, God will help you to avoid danger. When you have faith in God, sometimes God will help you to... Uh, avoid certain journeys and when you look back then you realize that wow that is why God uh, did not allow me uh, to, uh, to go uh, uh, that route Acts 27 27 the Bible reads it was the 14th night and we were being driven about in the Mediterranean by the storm about midnight the sailors suspected that we were getting close to up until what yeah, keep, keep going. Okay. So, they dropped so this is Apostle Paul. They were taking them as prisoners to go to Rome. As they were sailing on the Mediterranean Sea uh, from Israel, taking him to Italy. And then the ship in which they were, and uh, they landed at Malta. Uh, a lot of people go for holidays there. Up to today, when you go there, there is a church that has been uh, uh, built there uh, in memory of what happened to Paul and the believers who were there. This is the story we are reading. So there were storms raging against this uh, uh, the journey and the ship they were in. Yes, carry on. So they dropped a line with a weight tied to it. So they are to drop, you know, when they are sailing, they are able to drop uh, ropes, but nowadays they use different uh, uh, equipment. To die, we are going to die. And they stopped eating. They, they started panicking. Uh, have you ever experienced that anxiety? Have you ever experienced fear? You are in the plane and then you hear the turbulence and all that stuff. You, start, you stop thinking. And you are thinking, I can jump out of this, but where are you going to land if you jump without uh, all that? So this is what was happening there. Everybody was panicking, but if there is one person who is not panicking, go ahead, Sister Kathy. 
You have been waiting for 14 days now. He says it has been 14 days. You haven't eaten. You have to eat, otherwise you're going to die. And all this time you have not eaten anything. I beg you. I beg you. Then eat some food. You need it in order to survive. You need it to survive. Your fear will not help you to survive. That's why our children and all of us, let's not entertain worry. Worry will bring sickness and diseases and kill us. We need faith instead of fear. Yes, please. Not even a, not even a hair of your head will be lost. Well, no one, not even your hair will be lost. But everybody was panicking for 14 days, two weeks. The winds were battering their ship. They, they, they were thinking, now we are dying. They started uh, uh, sojourning, uh, getting heavy stuff out of the boat to throw them so that they would lighten up the ship. But he tells them, eat, not even your hair will be lost. After saying this, Paul took some bread, gave thanks to God before them all, broke it and began to eat. They took heart and every one of them also ate some food. They started eating because of one man who believed in God. Why? Because when you believe in God, all the times, the results of faith are positive. And you see things that others could not see. All the rest of the soldiers were seeing death. But Paul was not seeing death. He was seeing that everybody going to be uh, rescued. Yes, please. There was a total of 276. How many people were there? 276. 276. How many believers were in that ship? Yeah. Only one. 276 minus one, Jonathan. Help us, mathematician. 276 minus one. 275 non believers. In class, you might be the only one who know God. At your place of work, you might be the only one who know God. In your family, you might be the only one who know God. But I want to encourage you, your faith in God will always produce positive results. Your faith in God will always save other people that surround you. Carry on. After everyone had eaten enough, they lightened the ship by throwing all the wheat into the sea. So they lighted up and uh, they threw everything out of the ship. What's the next verse? When day came, the sailors did not recognize the coast, but they noticed a bay with a beach and decided that if possible, they would run the ship aground there. Yeah, so, carry on. So they cut off the anchors and let them sink into the sea. And at the same time, they united the rope, they untied the ropes and held the steering oars. They, then they raised the sail at, at the front of the ship so that the wind would blow the ship forward and we headed for shore. But the ship hit a sandbank and went aground. The front, the, the front part of the ship got stuck and could not move, while the back part was being broken into pieces by the violence of the waves. The soldiers made a plan to kill all the prisoners in order to keep them from swimming ashore and escaping. But the army officer wants to save Paul. Paul, so he stopped them from doing this. Instead, he ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and swim ashore. The rest were to follow, holding onto the planks or to some broken pieces of the ship. And this was how they all got safely ashore. Amen. Amen. Wow. What a story. And the island they landed at was at uh, Malta here in Europe. And uh, that is uh, as they were taking Paul uh, to, to Rome. And the soldiers who were taking them, the Roman code of soldiers, if you have got prisoners, you are not allowed to lose any prison. Either you kill them so they can account for them to say these are their bodies they wanted to escape. That's why when Jesus died on the cross, the soldiers who were guarding the grave of Jesus Christ are a Roman code of conduct of soldiers. You don't lose a soldier, you don't sleep on duty, and you don't tell a lie. Otherwise, see, they're going to chop off your head. This is the same uh, code, so they are saying, 
as they were going, the ship is stuck, and everybody thinks now we just have to swim to go to the island. And the soldiers are knowing to say, if these prisoners swim and go, will be accountable to our masters and they'll kill us. The best we can do is let's kill these uh, prisoners. So at least we'll have evidence to say we killed them, they wanted to run away. But one man said, no, because of Paul, we can't kill these prisoners. So he stopped the execution. What am I saying? When you have faith in God, calamity or danger will not come uh, near you. It may come near you, but it shall not touch you. Because God has promised to be with you and to be with me. The company might be going under, but because of your presence, you can stop the road, you can stop uh, the, the, the bankrupts, you can stop uh, what evil is about to happen. So they stopped killing, they stopped to say we are not going to kill these prisoners. Because Paul is among these people. So faith, as we mentioned, helps you to see beyond. Two weeks, the soldiers never ate anything. Because they were scared that the ship was about to, uh, to be damaged and everybody was going to die. But when you read this story, the Bible, Paul comes and says, the God I saved sent an angel in the night and revealed to me that no one of you, none of us, is going to die. Yes, there will be damage to the ship and everything, but none of us will die. May you be a believer of God that you will be able to tap into heaven to review what God is doing. There are things that people will struggle. I was reading a testimony, a very funny testimony. Uh, this man of God that we are building a, a very massive uh, church building. And then the ceiling, they needed uh, cranes uh, on the wheels to, in order for them to put up the ceiling. And then all these engineers and people that were there, the cranes came, but because they had already fixed the pillars at the entrance, the crane couldn't come in. And then they called the pastor to say, Pastor, we are stuck, sorry, we can't lift all the beams inside and the ceiling uh, stuff because uh, we have no equipment. The only equipment that could reach the ceiling, it is stuck by the entrance. And then the man of God came. And the Holy Spirit just revealed to him. Ask them to deflate the tires and let the thing move in. They deflated the tires, the whole truck went in, and they pumped the tires, and the whole thing fasting God, they were persevering. Carry on, read on, up to verse 16. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they saw things from where? From a distance. They could see things from a distance to say, yes, God has promised that it shall come. If you are able to see yourself to say, this is what I want to achieve. Yes, I can see it. You go for it. Read on. And they turned out they were foreigners and strangers on earth. They considered themselves as strangers in a fallen land. So they kept moving. They kept going. They kept moving. Read on. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. People who say such things. So faith, when you are in this impossible situation, you begin to speak things that no one may not have even understand you. He said these people, they were saying God will come and take us to the promised land. For example, they were in Egypt for 430 years. Their fathers died who went into Egypt, but they were saying God will take us out. God will take us out. They died believing that God will take us out. By then, in those days, they were, they had no books like we have today to say, I go to the library and read what happened in uh, 1845. There was no such a thing. The only thing they depended on was oral tradition. What they were taught when God spoke to our forefather Abraham, he said, and the children will say, Daddy, where is Abraham? And the parents will say, Abraham died 200 years ago. 
But this is what he said to our, our father Isaac. And where is Isaac? Oh, Isaac died a hundred years ago. And then they will move on to say, okay, uh, so should we believe what he said? He said, yes, believe. Joseph, who took them into Egypt, he died. You know what he did by faith? He told them, don't bury me here in a foreign land. When I die, embalm my bones. You know, girls, uh, you've done uh, the, uh, the pharaohs of Egypt, how they were burying them, uh, the bones, they could uh, embalm their bodies and do all these uh, graves in Egypt and put a coffin in there. Him says, don't bury me here. Just embalm me and keep my bones. He died and they must, because they stayed there for 430 years. Imagine Joseph went into Egypt when he was maybe 20 or 30. And then maybe at the age of 100 he dies. Then his relatives come and they stay there for 430 years. Let's uh, probability say he lived there maybe 60 or 70 years. And he went there when he was 20 or 30. Together we take 100. 100 from 430 years. Meaning they kept his bones. Maybe for 300 years. When they were coming out of Egypt, they carried the bones of a dead man. He told them, keep my bones. When you be going out of this country, take my bones, you go and bury me in the promised land in Israel. That is faith. So you see things afar. Even when you say, even when I die, I don't care. But when I die, this is what I want to be done. I want to encourage somebody. You say what you are believing God for by faith you need to endure you need some patience our children you need patience the songs when we tell you that I'll buy you shoes we'll buy you when we have money not every now and then every two days you remind me daddy you said that uh, you are buying me. yes we'll buy you in the evening you remind me daddy you said uh, uh, we are buying can we go to the shop no 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 we didn't say today one week later, they'll come and remind you, but this Joseph, he said, when I die, keep my bones. Whenever God takes you out of here, take my bones out. And the Jewish tradition, they believe. Uh, this is what they say. It's not proven from the word of God, but it's a good tradition. They believe that uh, when they carried the bones of a dead man, whom the bones they kept over 300 years, the Red Sea, this is the tradition, the story they tell. When the Red Sea saw the people come, carrying bones of a dead man, over 300 years, the sea parted themselves. <laughs> but that is just a story that they attach to this man. But we are talking of faith. Believe even if it tarries. Believe even if it takes longer. Let's all stand as we pray. Faith will always produce good results. The righteous, believers, Christians shall live by their faith. Christians shall succeed by their faith. Christians shall survive by their faith. Christians shall thrive in life by their faith. So today as we come to the end of the session, I just want to encourage you wherever you are right now, even those that are watching us on social media, those that are in Zoom, your faith in God, your trust in God, your confidence in God is not in vain. It shall produce good results. Abraham, one man, believed God. He left where he was comfortable at his uh, uh, relatives uh, place and the city he started going to a country he didn't know some of you right now you might be on a journey whereby you don't know how it's gonna turn out but i'm here to encourage you put your faith put your confidence your trust in god what is faith faith is like a driving license keep it safe even if you can't see your car keep your license safe. 
When the car comes, you use your license. Faith is like a title deed to your property. As long as you have a title deed to that property that you bought it, even if other people go in there to rent, it's not their house. It is yours. Why? You have the title deed in your name. God has given us his word. It's a will. As long as your name is in the will, it doesn't matter who takes the will. The lawyer will come to your rescue to say, produce the will as we distribute the estate of the late person. Jesus came and died on the cross of Calvary. And he has left us with a will where he has written your name and the things that belongs to you. All we need is faith in God. To say, God has said it. God has promised it. I believe, I will confess, I will speak it, and I will act according to the will of God. You have a will. You have a title deed. You have a certificate. Yes, graduation day hasn't come yet, but your certificate is there. Yes, the job has been advertised. You have got all the qualifications. Keep your results safe. Keep your CV safe. When the opportunity comes, you shall get good results. Faith will always produce good results. Father in heaven, right now, we want to pray and trust you. By faith, we shall achieve all that you have promised us in your word. Nothing is impossible. There may be a delay in between, but we trust you. By faith, are we going to keep quiet as we wait? No. We shall continue confessing the word of God. Every time people ask Abraham, what is your name? My name is Abraham. What does it mean? Father of many nations. They would ask him, how many children have you got? He says, I've got none. But I believe I'm going to have more children. At 100 years of age, they had their firstborn. Today, the whole world, we have believers. We have come to believe in God. Father, we thank you. Thank you for faith. Thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you, Lord. Help us to believe. Even sometimes when we doubt you, help us to believe you. Even when we go through difficult situations like Paul and other prisoners, he believed in you. You saved his life and 276 souls. You saved them because one man believed. Father, I pray for every family represented here. Because of their faith in you, their lives, their families, their places of work shall be saved and blessed. In the mighty name, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Let's give God a big gun crop offering. Thank you. Amen and amen. We come to the end of the service today. And we just want to say thank you so much for each one of you uh, for being in the house of the Lord. We love you and uh, uh, we appreciate you. And uh, we thank God for your lives. Uh